So here I am in the early morning, just sitting here. <laughs> this is my view, man. I mean, why would you not go hunting? I mean, this is, you talk about God's creation. I wanted to do this video to kind of talk to you really quick about how do you pick a hunting spot? It's uh, where I hunt, it's hard to see around here and I'll show you some pictures later, but up behind me there, if you can see all the ridges, all the ridges around here are all owned by a uh, uh, logging company. It's all pine trees, all the ridges are. And then most of the uh, haulers, as we call them around here in Tennessee, all the uh, draws are all hardwoods. So what you need to do, the pine trees are so thick and have blackberries and everything, you can hear the deer walking through there and you cannot see them. Um, so what you want to try, what I, we try to do around here is to find where the deer are traveling from their nighttime feeding spots to the daytime bedding spots. Um, so, as you can see around here, I'm going to show you from my hunting spot, but right down below here, it goes almost straight down right there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a whole holler right down here, and there's a line coming straight up this little holler of a buck. Had uh, He was rubbing, I'll show you, a buck rubs on it, but... Uh, so I found a line of buck rubs of him where he's coming from his nighttime. There's a back behind me. You see that little low spot there? There's a, there's a road right there. Not a road, but a logging road. And there's a holler that's almost identical to this that comes to a point and comes straight up the hill and drops down to the other side. And it's a little side holler that then goes into a major holler that feeds out into their nighttime fields. So what they're doing is they're coming up the main hauler, coming up this little side hauler, hopping over the road, and there's a low spot. And I'll show you when I get up there, there's a low spot that has where there's always water all year long, there's a puddle there. And they come and drip back down on this side. And if you can see how thick, how thick it is over there. There's about 20 acres there of stuff that was logged at one time that is so thick there's no way you can even walk through it so this is my hunting spot right here believe it or not at this one spot i actually just sit right here that's my spot i sit here and right over where i just came from where my game camera was i killed two big bucks well i killed one small buck sorry uh and i killed a real nice eight pointer Right there, a 35-yard shot. Both of them were 35-yard shot. In fact, the one was coming exactly where I told you, coming from the low spot up there where my car is at. Walked straight across and didn't even know I was there. And then the next guy came up. He was actually walking right towards me. I thought he was going to run right into me, and then he made a, a turn. And both of them were going straight down where the buck rubs from the other big deer were. I didn't see the other big deer. I uh, kicked him out one evening when I was coming in. But I tried to hit here as a... a as they're coming from behind me in the morning, you can see the ridge line right there. You do not, of course, shoot a deer up on the ridge line when you can see sky behind them because if you miss or the bullet goes through them, they're going to end up somewhere else that you don't want it to be. But what's nice about it is that's where the sun rises. So I can just look and see silhouette coming across in the very early morning when, you know, you really can't see what's going on. And they'll just come down and the wind, as long as it's, it's usually coming from that side over to this side. Now there have been a few mornings when I came in and the sun and the wind was coming the opposite direction. So as you know, the deer would have smelled me long before he ever came over that ridge. So you got to make sure when you're hunting the area that they're traveling that you're in the right spot for the uh, which way the wind is. You want to be down, with the, you want the wind to be hitting your face so they don't smell you. It is uh, beginning of March in Tennessee. So it's probably, he's already lost his antlers. So unfortunately, since my game camera wasn't taking the pictures, I have no idea right now what is until summertime when they start growing them again. But I want to show you these buck rubs, the size of the trees that this guy was rubbing. Can 
you see that? That is a big rub. And he did it from that tree to that tree to that tree all the way up. I mean, look how big this tree is. And he rubbed it raw. There's probably 12 trees straight down this holler at this guy. See, all the, see this tree right here? And that tree down there, there's a line going straight down to the bottom of the to the bottom of the holler where it gets really, 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 really thick. And I guarantee on the other side, he's got it straight coming up from the other holler. And when you're looking for a place to hunt, again, you're always trying to find where they're going to travel. I don't know if you can see. It's a little hard, a little hard to walk through the trees while you're holding the ca a camera and trying to show what you're doing. So right here is my the little road, logging road that goes across where I just came from down there. And in the mornings, you can see right here. See, there's always water right here. See the pine trees right there. So they're coming across down below. I don't know if you can see that. That's almost straight down 300 feet. So they're coming up this little narrow holler coming up, hitting that water, going across, going to the thick stuff. And then in the evening time, they're, they're making the complete different track going back down to the fields. So I hunt this in the morning, very early morning, a very early, eh, I'm out of breath, evening. And uh, both of the buck that I killed last year were about seven o'clock in the morning, which normally the deer around here that I get are usually about nine o'clock in the morning. But I found the path of this certain area where they're leaving their feeding area. So I hope this was helpful. Keep watching SRL Solutions. Keep watching so we can learn together. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope it was instructional. If you could click on the little red button that says subscribe, I'd greatly appreciate it. And you can keep checking back in for weekly updates. I look forward to hearing from you in the comments section with whatever comments or questions you may have and interacting with you, my fans, and get any information to you that I can that's relevant to the question. And if you also want to see something in an episode, I'll be happy to give you credit for it, and also get the information together for you. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, the space station, wherever social media is next. Click on more of my videos to expand your knowledge and become more self-reliant as we learn together.